Hello everyone, these are our predictions for Edexcel GCSE History Paper 3. Now, we know exams can be stressful, but it's important to remember that your well-being is just as crucial as your revision. A balanced approach to studying is going to help you feel more confident and calm when exam day arrives. Our 2025 predictive papers are going to help you focus your revision on key topics, but it's also important for you to take care of yourself. We've carefully analysed past papers, examiner reports and trends to create predictive papers that mirror the Edexcel GCSE history format. These papers include source questions, essay responses and thematic topics just like in your real exam. They allow you time to practice, helping you improve your answer structure, use evidence effectively and develop strong arguments. And what's amazing is that for the first time, we're including full video walkthroughs for free. So if you're stuck on a question, these step-by-step -step guides will show you how to analyse and use sources effectively. The best way to structure essays to secure full marks and what examiners are really looking for in top level answers. Now, as always, our predicted papers are based on past trends and examiner reports, helping you focus on the topics most likely to come up. However, these are just predictions. It's essential to revise your entire course to be fully prepared. So we have written papers for two options for paper three. That's option 31, Weimar and Nazi Germany, and option 33, the USA, 1954 to 1975. Let's start with option 31, Weimar and Nazi Germany, 1918 to 39. The period 1918 to 39 saw Germany transformed from democracy to dictatorship with the rise of the Nazi party and Hitler's consolidation of power. This topic covers political changes, propaganda, economic struggles and life under Nazi rule. To succeed in your exam, it's essential to understand how the Nazis gained and maintained control, the impact of their policies and how different groups in society were affected. So first up, revise Nazi control of the arts. The Nazis tightly controlled the arts to promote their ideology and eliminate any un-German influences. In painting and sculpture, artists were required to create heroic images of Aryan uh, Germans, while modern art was banned as degenerate. In music, jazz and other foreign influences were prohibited, while traditional German composers like Beethoven were promoted. Theatre and film became propaganda tools, with films like Triumph of the Will glorifying Hitler. In literature, books by Jewish, communist and liberal authors were burned in public book burnings. This strict control over culture was crucial to brainwashing the German population, reinforcing Nazi ideology while suppressing free thought and creativity. If asked how the Nazis controlled culture, explain how they banned modern influences and promoted Aryan nationalism to shape public beliefs. Next, brush up on the Munich Putsch, 1923. This was Hitler's failed attempt to overthrow the Weimar government in November 1923. He believed the Weimar Republic was weak, especially after signing the Treaty of Versailles, and the economic crisis caused by hyperinflation had left many Germans desperate for strong leadership. Inspired by Mussolini's march on Rome, Hitler thought he could seize power in Germany with the support of right-wing groups. However, the putsch failed and Hitler was arrested. Despite this, he used his trial to gain national publicity, presenting himself as a patriot fighting for Germany. While in prison, he wrote Mein Kampf, outlining his future plans for the Nazi party. Most importantly, the failure led Hitler to change his strategy. He decided to take power legally through elections rather than through force. If asked about the Munich Putsch, explain how it forced Hitler to rethink his approach and shift to using democratic methods to gain power. Next up, revise reasons for increased support for the Nazi party, 1929 to 32. Between this time, the Nazis went from being a small party to the most powerful in Germany. The Great Depression of 1929 was the key turning point. Following the Wall Street crash, unemployment soared to over 6 million by 1932, and the Weimar government struggled to solve the crisis. This made the Nazis' promise of job stability and national strength extremely appealing. The Nazis used propaganda effectively, with Josef Goebbels organising mass rallies, posters and radio broadcasts to spread Nazi ideas. Hitler's speeches presented him as Germany's saviour. Additionally, the fear of communism pushed many business owners and middle class voters to support the Nazis as they promised to project, protect Germany from a communist revolution. The weakness of the Weimar Republic, its inability to handle economic problems and its reliance on unpopular leaders 
such as Chancellor Bruning, made people lose faith in democracy. This period is crucial because it demonstrates how economic crisis can lead to the rise of extremist parties. If asked about why Nazi support grew, focus on the impact of the Great Depression, Nazi propaganda and fear of communism. Next, brush up on the standard of living a workers in Nazi Germany. The Nazis claimed to improve workers' lives, but the reality was mixed. On the positive side, unemployment fell as the Nazis created millions of jobs in rearmament, construction and public works, such as the autobahns. Workers also benefited from the Strength Through Joy programme, which provided cheap holidays, theatre tickets and sports events. The Volkswagen scheme encouraged workers to save for a car, though most never actually received one. However, workers lost key rights. Trade unions were banned, meaning they had no power to demand better wages or conditions. While employment rose, wages remained low and the cost of living increased. Workers had no choice but to obey Nazi policies as the German Labour Front controlled all aspects of employment. This topic is important as it highlights the contrast between Nazi propaganda and reality. If asked about living standards under the Nazis, give a balanced answer. While jobs and leisure activities improved, wages remained low and workers lost their freedoms. Okay, those are our predictions for option 31. We hope they are useful to you. Don't forget exam preparation is important, but so is your mental well-being. Take breaks, stay positive and remind yourself that progress comes from steady effort, not perfection. To make revision easier, our free video walkthroughs will guide you through essay structures, source analysis and examiner expectations. You've got this and we're here to help. Now let's move on to option 33, the USA 954 to 75. The USA 1954-75 topic covers two of the most significant struggles in modern American history. The civil rights movement, which fought for racial equality and justice, and the Vietnam War, one of America's most controversial conflicts. This period was shaped by landmark protests, violent resistance, shifting public opinion, and major changes in American politics. With so much content to cover, effective revision is really important. Our 2025 predicted topics highlight the key areas we think are most likely to appear, helping you with a useful starting point for your revision. So first up, revise the idea of limited progress in desegregating education in 1954-58. The Brown v. Board of Education ruling made racial segregation in schools unconstitutional, but desegregation was slow due to fierce resistance in the South. Many states introduced massive resistance laws to prevent desegregation and the federal government was reluctant to enforce the ruling. African-American students faced violence and intimidation when attempting to attend white schools. The most famous example was the Little Rock Crisis in 1957, where Arkansas's governor used the National Guard to block nine black students from entering school. President Eisenhower was forced to send federal troops to escort them. This case showed that change required federal intervention because many states refused to comply voluntarily. If asked why progress was slow, mention white resistance, weak federal enforcement and violent opposition. Next, brush up on the civil rights campaign in Selma, that's 1965. Selma, Alabama became a major focus for the voting rights campaign because only 2% of black residents were registered to vote, despite making up half the population. Civil rights activists, including Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, that's the SCLC, organised peaceful marches to demand voting rights. On Bloody Sunday, March the 7th, 1965, protesters attempted to march from Selma to Montgomery, but were violently attacked by state troopers on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. The brutal police response was widely covered by the media, shocking the nation and increasing public support for those civil rights. In response, President Johnson pushed for the Voting Rights Act 1965, which banned racial discrimination in voting. This event demonstrated how non-violent protest and media attention could pressure the government into action, directly leading to a major civil rights law. If asked about Selma's significance, explain how public outrage and media coverage forced the government to act. More broadly, look into the rise of the Black Power Movement 1963 to 1968. By the mid-60s, many African Americans were frustrated with the slow pace of change under Martin Luther King Jr.'s non-violent approach, leading to the rise of black power. This movement encouraged self-defence, racial pride and economic empowerment. 
Support for Black Power grew due to ongoing racism, police brutality and economic inequality, despite legal, legal victories in civil rights. Many felt that peaceful protests weren't enough, especially after Martin Luther King Jr.'s campaigns failed to improve economic conditions. Influenced by Malcolm X, groups like the Black Panther Party, founded in 1966, took a more direct approach, setting up community programmes while also confronting police brutality. Black power divided the civil rights movement as some saw it as necessary, while others feared it led to increased government crackdowns. If asked why black power gained support, discuss disillusionment with nonviolence, ongoing racism and the influence of leaders like Malcolm X. Finally, you should also look into public support for American involvement in Vietnam. At the start of the Vietnam War, most Americans supported US involvement, believing in the domino theory, the idea that if Vietnam fell to communism, other countries would follow. The government framed the war as a fight for democracy and early military successes reinforced public support. However, by the late 60s, public opinion shifted against the war. The Tet Offensive of 1968 proved the US was not winning, while graphic TV coverage brought the horrors of the war into American homes. The high death toll of 58,000 US soldiers killed and widespread draft resistance increased opposition, especially after the Kent State shooting in 1970, where troops killed student protesters. This conflict demonstrated how media and public opinion could shape a war. If asked about why support declined, discuss media coverage, high casualties, draft resistance and the tear offensive. Okay, so those are our predictions. Now we know exams can be stressful, but do remember your hard work is all you can do and you can only do what you can do. It's okay to feel overwhelmed, but make time for breaks, fresh air and looking after yourself. Don't forget if you need some extra help, our predicted papers and free video walkthroughs are here to guide you through essay structures, source analysis and exam techniques, making revision clearer and more manageable. Stay focused, stay positive and believe in yourself. Good luck.